Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right, inside metal show on T Radio V. And I got my very good friends and associates here with me today on this special T Radio V Inside Metal episode. I got my co producer for the Inside Metal movie series, Mr. Carl Alvarez. Hi, Bob. How's it going? There. Pretty good. How you doing, Mr. I'm Alvarez? Easing into it, yeah. Very cool. I've been working on getting getting you guys on and finally have a chance to do it. Mr. Curtis Don Vito. Did I say that correctly? Uh, I think Don so. Don Vito. Say it again. Uh, Curtis Von Dito. No! Oh, no, 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 no. It is Don Vito, yes. ladies and gentlemen, just There's so you one. know. Uh, Curtis Don Vito, of course, my <laughs> associate producer and also editor. Uh, we're missing a couple guys on the staff. We are. Uh, you know, we got Robert Gaston. He's he's in shackles, chained up, finishing up the DVD. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't we wouldn't let him loose, so he has to uh, get everything done before he's allowed to play ball with us. So uh, um, no, actually, he couldn't make it today. And of course, Joe Floyd, our uh, co-producer, we're going to have him on a separate. Uh, episode for Warrior. Uh, Warriors back together, well, he man. He gets his own show. He gets his own show. I told him and AC, I'll give him, I'll give you guys your own show to promote Warrior because they're such a great band and they got a uh, yeah, new record. Dude, I heard some of the new album. Yeah. The, everyone knows the classic uh, band Warrior. LA band Fighting for the Earth. Uh, Fighting for the Earth. Total Metal Anthem. Dude, the new songs are all Total Metal Anthem. Really? Perry back in the band. Is he? Oh, yeah. No Perry's way. back in and uh, AC has been writing riffs with with Joe and monstrous stuff. I mean, every song yeah. is like an anthem, like you know, "Fighting for the Earth" and "Defenders of Creation." Oh, it's just yes. a whole album of just classic oh, anthemic metal. So it's just going to be cool. So Joe, we're going to have you on real soon. So be prepared and be talkative. <laughs> so uh, anyway, Carl. Curtis, let's yes. talk about the movie. Why don't you show the up movie. The, the DVD? This is still the, the screener DVD. Inside Metal, our very it first title. It will be coming out. It'll look pretty much just like this, won't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it will. Pretty yeah, it will uh, yeah. look pretty much just like that. It'll be called The Pioneers of L.A. Hard Rock and Metal. Yes. The first of the trilogy of the Inside L.A. Metal series. And uh, working on the second one now, man. I'm going to seclude myself for the next few months in a yes. far, far place that no one will know about <laughs> i'm going to be secluded and do nothing but work on the and second being title a padded of the movie. cell and that's right the second title the la metal scene explodes uh that and of course the third title the um, uh, uh, rise of la thrash metal and we hope to get them all out by the end of the year you guys you ready for that me? Really? Oh, man. We're going to kick Three some movies? ass on this. Hell yeah, man. Do one year. Can you do it? Come on, <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> well, Carl. we have two Carl. in the pipeline. Yeah. And one's coming out April 7th, which is the first part yeah, right. of the well, Pioneers. It's that, it's that movie right there, yeah. And then there's the second part of the Pioneers, which comes out ah. June 9th. Yeah, yeah. It is DVD. a two-parter, the Pioneers. That's true. So, Wait a minute. It's got, coming out, huh? Seven. No, May not. Isn't it uh, a month apart? Uh, no, I saw them. So the they're coming out as separate. June ninth. Oh, June. Okay, two months oh, apart. Okay, oh. all right. So, so they're yeah. coming out as two separate. Yeah, they're coming yes. out. That's why we got bonus material. See, that's why I'm only the associate DVD. producer. I don't really know what's going yes. on. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's why uh, Robert's working on all the um, different uh, e- each DVD. You want to get both of them because for one, they're both different movies, and each one is going to have separate bonus material, separate deleted scenes separate uh, photos from the photo gallery. So you don't want to pull this off of YouTube or just watch it off of Netflix. I want, you want to own the DVD for all the killer <clears throat> bonus material you that we're going to have it. on each and part one and part and two. And for us is. nerdy metal guys, you'll love it. It is. It's good stuff. I mean, oh, yeah. as if a three hour movie wasn't enough. We added some more uh, <laughs> uh, bonus material to it. So, again, the movie itself, just so I know people are confused, it's a three-hour movie. It comes in two parts, part one and part two of the pioneers of L.A. hard rock and metal. And I believe we're making each movie a two-parter because there's just too much good shit to fit yeah, into one 90-minute movie. And we found that out the hard way. I it's know, tough, I man. Know. It's tough to uh, well, you, were, full you hit the ground running on it. I know that. And when you started, you did so many interviews right off, right off the bat. What was that process like? I mean, you were just going at it crazy. We just did it. We just, I just, just started making calls. You know, I, I we set it up in Joe's 
house in his studio and in his you know patio area there mm -hmm. and uh you know when when warren uh you know our executive producer warren croyle can't forget about warren he uh set everything up you know he's the one that uh, basically uh, you know, came up the concept uh, with the concept with me and Joe. We, uh, you know, he it was his idea to do a LA metal series, and then Joe brought me on. And uh, you know, I've known Joe for a while, and uh, we just started going out with the interviews. I, I my, you know, my my whole thing was let's just start interviewing people, and uh, then we'll you know get to the uh, you know without thinking or anything. It's like boom, let's just get it done. So uh, mm -hmm. I call as many people as we could, and they called their friends and their friends and. I wanted to get as many people from back in that scene, which which covers roughly from 1975 to 1981, as you guys know. And it was a scene that hasn't been talked about. The L.A. scene, of course, everyone knows Van Halen from that era. And then, you know, everyone, uh, you know, assumes there was nothing until, you know, Motley Crue and Rat and Wasp and all that happened in like 82, 83. But that is not the case, man. Well, there were so many, oh, so yeah. many great bands in the Starwood Club and and everything else. So that is yeah, and, and that that scene alone, you know, took, like I said, two DVDs just to cover a, a the uh, full scene on I that, know so. and, and I think we only scratched the surface yeah. I mean all the info is there but we could have went further we wanted you know as you know we all agreed and we we've all come from the old school mentality and yeah. we've all been around during that time even though we we're a little bit too young to get into the Starwood and stuff yeah. we remember well, see, that that's era. what was so great for me when you pulled me in on this it was like oh my mm -hmm. god this is a chance to find out if all the stories I've heard are true and what's really going on out there you know, because I never got to go to the Starwood. Yeah, neither. Yeah, you know, I'd always heard Carl. about it. Never did. And, you know, all the stories. And it was like, God, I wish I could have been there. Well, I was like 15, 16. And it was 18 and over club, the Starwood. And I know I wanted to see Judas Priest so bad when they played in 79 on the oh, Hellbent for yeah, Leather Tour, yeah. which I tried convincing my cousin uh, to take me. And he's like, dude, you know, you're it's 18 and <laughs> over, you know. And, you know, he, of course, he was like 21, 22. And. Uh, but uh, yeah, it uh, you know that that was one thing that I missed was was going to the Starwood. But um, yeah. you know, I, I mean that that was the important thing, of course, getting Carl involved. I've known Carl for years, and he grew up on the LA metal scene just as I did. And I wanted to pull people in, including the the editors, and everyone needed to understand the scene, you know. Cause yeah. It's, well, you know, a project like this, you got to bring in you know people exactly who, who have a passion for it, absolutely who believe in it, know a what passion it's about. and and an inch not only a passion and interest, but a, a, a knowledge about you know cause, you know when I tell you you know use uh, more of the snow footage or the uh, Stephen Quadros footage and more Brian O'Brien, you don't have to ask who is that again, who is it, you know you know exactly. Well, who it yeah, is, I know? mean you know I, I mean some of these guys you know I wasn't that familiar with. I, I kind of heard stories about them but I didn't know who they were specifically because they were the, the trip about this movie is, is all the the local bands that were huge on the scene yeah. but didn't get you know the recognition well the labels weren't signing them that was a thing after they signed Van Halen as, as it's told in the movie the punk scene hit yeah and labels were very selective they weren't they didn't have that kind of copycat mentality thinking you know which mm -hmm. they did in the 80s particularly the latter 80s they Figure, you know, if there's one Motley or if there's one Poison, well, yeah, let's, that's you know, we'll, we'll sign 10 yeah. of them, you know. But yeah. back in those days, if you had one Van Halen, that was it, you know. And <laughs> so uh, there weren't a lot of, of, of signings, even though these bands were packing in, selling out 800 seat venues. Some of them doing, you know, two, three nights at the Starwood. Easy. Yeah. I mean, Wolfgang was touring without a uh, album. They were doing up to five nights at the Whiskey, an unsigned yeah. band, which is, you know, pretty insane now. Oh. I mean. You know, headlining, I would smile. And yeah. these guys headlining alongside Van Halen, yet people don't know who Smile is. Smile. If, if you're not from here, yeah. But see, that's what gave us a chance to do here. Well, let's uh, let's watch the uh, the trailer before yeah, we yeah. get it. How much? How many times? We got enough time to get to win a break. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's do. Uh, this is the original trailer since we played the edited version on the last one. Let's do the uh, original trailer to Pioneers of LA Hard Rock and Metal, the three minute. Great. Oh. Okay, this is a, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. This is the edited trailer. Go ahead. There was no hip hop. There were no boy bands. There was no punk. There was nothing. It was rock and roll. You could sense when you went to Hollywood that it was, um, felt like there was more, um, girls. You know, the rainbow, you know, Richie Blackmore, Jimmy Page, Led Zeppelin. Parties were 
like a phenomenon back there. Things started happening so quickly, we were like, kind of like, thousands of kids would show up. But LA was, was doing it. People underestimate the power of the 70s influence. That whole scene, you know, in LA was, was, was the scene. <laughs> the meddlers against the punkers. He gave him some blow and a couple of and some cocktails, and all of a sudden, you know, it was game on. Helicopter shining the light down on everybody, man. <laughs> You give a young man like that, you know, a couple million dollars, they are going to get fucked up. It seemed like we had the world by the balls. And we did. The LA scene was huge. God, it was wild. All right, there you go. The theatrical trailer, that's why it said uh, dates. We did a, a short theater run. That was edited that's, by that's Mr. Curtis I, yeah, I Don yeah, Vito. Yeah, yes, yeah. that was. When I say edited, it, we edited it for the theatrical uh, that we did about uh, 100 dates or so in uh, all over the... Uh, how many theater days? Maybe not 100, but quite uh, a few. It was about 50 or 60 for yeah, sure. about yeah. 60. And then we did a couple in Europe. I got some good reaction from the people in Amsterdam. Yeah. So, really? G- uh, yeah, January really 7th. That was yeah. our last uh, yeah. screening. We did, we did some... some uh, Amsterdam and Switzerland. And uh, Austria. We did three Austria. in Austria. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was good, man. Uh, you know, it was a little bit... Uh, we, the, the promotion wouldn't and, and all could have been better on a lot of the theaters, but just the fact that we got it out hey, in the theaters... The fact that it was, was in theaters was pretty amazing amazing <laughs> and thanks to everyone that uh, came out to the theaters and thanks for everyone that supported it supported the fan back campaign oh, yeah. and that have been uh, supporting this movie uh since day one it was funny just as a footnote san, the san francisco screening it was on the day of uh, san francisco's worst rainstorm mm. yeah and the buffalo screening was s- buffalo's worst, worst snowstorm storm ever <laughs> in like the past Fifty years, but or people so. managed to come out, which is yeah. great. San Francisco it was during the big flooding rain rainstorm they had, and there was like uh, fifty people, I think, uh, which uh, forty is great. to fifty people, and and that still came out for it. So yeah, pretty well, amazing. And they said everything hardcore. else, the schools, everything was closed down, but they kept the theater open, and that's right. And uh, so. Just for you, San Francisco, we're going to be doing an Inside San Francisco medal. But right now, I think we got a break coming up in just a bit. Uh, in fact, we'll do one now. We're going to come back with my guest, uh, Carl Alvarez and Curtis Don Vito. Thank you. On Inside Metal T Radio V. This is David Faustino, and you are watching T Radio V. Do you see what I'm saying? It's television crossed with radio. It's all together. It's weird. Radio's in the middle of it. It's amazing. You're watching it. Go. Love and marriage. Love and marriage. Andy D on T Radio V. Bing, bang, bing, Bing, boom, boom, right? Yeah. Andy D. Auntie Radio V, bobbity bibbity bobbity boo, and E D. Auntie Radio V, the Andy Dick Show, Wednesdays from four to six p.m. on T Radio V. Wow! So but we'll do it. We'll do it better when we when the show actually starts. Yeah, no. Join Dave Navarro and friends for Dark Matter Wednesdays at nine p.m. on T Radio V. Dave Navarro here, Dark Matter Radio, tradiov.com. The universe is vast, enormous, huge, full of stars, planets, and matter. Some of the matter is so dense that not even light escapes. Get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get on the mic, Frank. Pardon me, sir. Pardon my reach. <laughs> See, and you guys were worried. I think this is going great. <laughs> Pardon my reach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get the f- away from me, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are really beautiful. Oh, you Thanks, really you guys. He's one of the most beautiful people I've ever known. This is pretty much every week. He brings in a guest that tells him how beautiful he is. Pardon my reach. If you have to reach over me, then don't do it. He is the straightest <laughs> gay guy I know. Dave Navarro signing off. Dark Matter. Thank Good you night. for listening. Bye. <laughs> Dark Matter with Dave Navarro, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on T Radio V. Excellent party.
time. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. There you go, the fast version of Ozzy Osbourne's Suicide Solution. <laughs> that is Chipmunk Ozzy. I should have known that, that from the before that this was a fast version. Anyway, T Radio V Inside Metal Show. Got my guests and uh uh, uh, co-workers, I guess I could call you Cohorts. Guys. Cohorts. Uh, partners, partners in crime. crime. I don't know. Whatever. Carl Alvarez, <laughs> my uh, co-producer in the Inside Metal Project, and Curtis Don Vito from uh, SNU, also yeah. frontman for the band SNU, who is the associate producer and editor, along with Mr. Robert Gaston, who was unavailable to come today. And yes, uh, same with Joe Floyd. Dungeon. Who uh, will, like I said, will get uh, get Joe on before? And yes, uh, we got Robert locked in a dungeon. Got to get that uh, DVD done. That's right. Get it done, Robert. Come on. Jeez. So uh, the uh, release date again, April. April 7th for the first part of the Pioneers of Hard Rock, L.A. Hard Rock and Metal. Two DVD set. And June 9th for the second part so. of the Pioneers of L.A. Hard Rock and Metal. And that'll be a worldwide release, boys and girls. And we mm -hmm. are going to follow that up with, uh, of course, the digital. Get it on Netflix and uh, iTunes and everywhere. Video all that fun. It'll be everywhere. Video downloaded. You, you, you want it, you got it. So yeah. uh, there you go. So I uh, definitely look for that. But uh, well, let's uh, get on to the second one that we're working on now. It's going to be called The L.A. Metal Scene Explodes. And it's kind of a sequel or pretty much a sequel to yeah. the uh, pioneers of L.A. hard rock and metal covering the L.A. hard rock and metal scene from 82, roughly 82 to 86. And there's a reason why we kind of cut it off mm -hmm. at 86. And uh, I, you know, w when I was talking to Warren and we were talking about doing this as a uh, as a series, as a trilogy, so to speak, uh, rather than continuing on into the late 80s, which probably is the most popular era of that scene and the most covered era, mm -hmm. you know, with Guns N' Roses and Poison and Warrants and all those bands. Uh, and that was the reason I didn't want to do it. It was covered. It's been done. It's been talked about. It's been overdone on all the VH1 behind the musics. And I didn't feel there was anything that I or we could do uh, in this movie that would be much different. And, yeah, uh, so it's been done. It's been done, and it no wasn't glam. really my scene. No yeah, glam. it was, uh, we, you know, but what was so interesting about, you know, the, this this next one, of course, you know, the early years, a lot of people don't, I, I wanted to give the exposure to the pioneers, a lot of these these bands that broke the ground, even though they weren't, they didn't, they, m many of them wow, never took off. which bands were those? Well, we could talk <laughs> a lot about them. We mentioned Smile, well, we a la carte, the Greg they're Leon invasion. They're all, they're all Legs, right in there. Legs, Diamond. Legs, you Diamond. you got to see the movie. The Weasels. Uh, the, one of the first punk metal bands out Don there. Don Dawkins' first band, Airborne. Airborne, Wolfgang, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the, the members from these bands obviously went on to, to uh, Dante be a big Fox. band. Dante Fox, you know, great turned white. into Great White. Exciter, you know, which was George Lynch's old band. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so many bands that were out there during that time. But uh, the second one, you know, was when, when the scene broke. Wasp and Rat, and, and, and that to me, that was our era. R really, what we grew up in the mm -hmm. clubs, you know, when we were going to the Troubadour, the Troubadour was like the main metal club then. Uh, Whiskey was closed for a while uh, during that time. Roxy was doing a lot of theater stuff. They would do shows every now and again. Yeah. They would do s certain shows, but it was really in Hollywood, the uh, uh, the Troubadour, of course, the country club, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and Orange oh, County yeah. where Carl and I grew up. It was all about the Woodstock Radio City and uh, the mm -hmm. Concert Factory. And we saw all the great bands from L.A. You know, I saw some of Motley Crue's very first shows. I saw Motley Crue, Rat, and Sound Barrier at the Radio City and some of early Wasp shows. I saw Metallica's very first show at Radio City. So some great, great shows during that era, you know. Uh, and then the Orange County bands, you know, Max Havoc, August Red Moon, Dante Fox, you know, turned into Great White. All those bands were, were always playing. And then you had the L.A. bands coming in all the time once a month you know malice you know snow uh you know so it, it, you know the, you, you didn't have to leave orange county to get uh, you know yeah your fix i know malice. that's that's where i grew up yeah you know so yeah I was you remember the woodstock right 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's when I when I was cutting my chops, yeah. first getting into my first band. Right, was in that 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 period. So mm -hmm. I was just getting started, and I was learning what the club scene was all about and everything. You know, I think the first band I ever saw in a club was a la carte. Oh wow, yeah. You know, and this yeah. was like towards the end of their, and they had right. like a, a second guitar player. Oh yeah, that yeah. was towards the end. Yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. it was that whole period. And, and the first time I saw them, it was like, whoa. That's right. That was the first band I saw at the old Golden Bear, which is no longer the Golden Bear Club on PCH. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was fantastic. I saw them. That had to be, that had to be eighty one. I think. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, when they for I was like fifteen. Yeah, fifteen, sixty. I was yeah, eighty one. They played uh, and just blew me away. Yeah. Awesome. I think at that time uh, uh, the Los Angeles music scene it was besides going through an evolution after Van Halen, after the whole punk scene kind of fell apart. Metal really evolved. It found itself. But the club owners got wise too. Pay to play started. Yep. The bands yeah. were able to get in there without actually having the talent. Whereas before it was mm -hmm. all based on talent. Yeah. There were some talented bands that were able to get in through pay to play, but you started to see it kind of be more watered down as like 86, 87, 88, where well, yeah, everybody was coming. the later in. Well, you know, 86, yeah. 87, what they would usually do is they'd get a big headliner. Whether it be you know a, a band like a Leather Wolf or uh, you know Poison at the time who were, before they were signed uh, you know they were a big headliner you know Eden Racer uh, X Racer X Lizzie Lizzie Borden mm -hmm. you know and they would have the opening bands do the pay to play and then after they were running out of headliners and all these headliners were getting signed they were just having you know even to uh, do a headline show there they were having the headliners you know do the pay to play so that that's when it really that did shifted ruin the, scene. the whole landscape yeah absolutely because you know. He, he, before you you had to prove yourself you had to be great yeah. you couldn't even get the gig unless you you told totally you had to be pass. great and you had to have a draw on your own you know and yeah. that was the thing you know if, if you back and then, if you if were, were great, great you usually did, did have, have a draw, draw. yeah Absolutely, so. but then once it shifted to who could sell the most tickets mm. then you know the talent became secondary absolutely and i hated that. the club owners were worried that they wouldn't be able to continue on i mean they had their economic reasons oh yeah i totally it well. get it mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's an easy way to pay the bills and that's something we didn't really get into is talking to some of the club owners uh, you know the club owners all they really care is that they got their money was they had they ha hired their own promoters and at that time a promoter wasn't you know on, on this first uh uh, DVD. We have promoters like you know David Forrest, who yeah. promoted the uh, uh, you know the, the Starwood and the Whiskey uh, in the late 70s into 1980, 81, and that was all about getting the great bands that could draw and knowing what bands could draw and mixing a good you know a, a good bill together, which would you know sometimes they would mix up the punk and new wave bands, but they knew each band would bring an audience and they would pack the club you know yeah. even if there were fights or whatnot <laughs> and uh, and they would be drinking you know and that was the important thing and i think the club just wanted the place packed where you know obviously they make their money on alcohol so sure. it was up to the promoters to do you know and the promoters never wanted to lose it with the promoters in, in the latter 80s they weren't really promoters they would just basically rent the club and if, if you had five bands doing pay to play you got your money up front there was no risk it was like yeah. a no risk so yeah. it was uh, whether the bands do or not i mean the, the bands could do a, you got to do a pay to play and 10 people could show up in the club and the promoter would make money because yeah. they got advanced you know a thousand dollars or whatever it was from I each know. band so that's that's for those that don't know pay to play that's what pay to play is but let's do the um before we get into our second break let's do run the uh this is something i don't think we've run on t radio v is the second uh uh, uh trailer for the uh, second title the uh uh this LA Metal Scene Explodes. Uh, my, my, my mind is shot here. Uh, do, you have, do we have that one queued up? Here we go. We had such a great metal scene in LA in the early 80s. So it really was an amazing time to be here. You got the Sunset Boulevard and it was just packed. It was like Mardi Gras, heavy metal Mardi Gras. our dressing room at the Roxy after we played. I'm looking around and there's Vince Neil passed out in the corner in a pile of his own puke. Yep, we're in Hollywood. <laughs> well, we ain't in Alaska anymore. <laughs> you 
epicenter of metal is now happening in, in Los Angeles. The UK press was particularly excited by what was going on in the LA and California, and in America in general by the early 80s, because the new wave of British heavy metal had pretty much run out of steam. At that time, there was so much good metal. You know, it was so good because it was so genuine. I mean, you could feel it. It was electric. The air was filled with something that was going to happen. At first, they were friendly and hanging out and for all fun and games. Then it became competition. The LA scene was so crowded with musicians, and everybody was getting to know each other. They all started sounding similar to each other because they were hanging out at each other's rehearsal sessions. Things kind of got polarized, and you know, they're like, you're either part of this group or you're part of that group. Everybody had their own take on, on this new form of music. I don't know what I'm going to do. There's no way if that guy is the new guitar hero that any, any of us can keep up. Keep fighting. It's just like getting a deal was just the beginning. By the, the time of the early 80s, it was very, very hard to get shows if you were a heavy metal band or hard rock band. We did some shows over that summer opening for Armored Saint. Uh, and, and we felt that if we could kind of ride their coattails, maybe there would be hope. We were in the dressing room next to them, and that's the, we heard them discussing their whole thing about they thought they were too heavy for L.A. and they need to move to San Francisco. You know, we definitely had a, a bit of a, of, a, of a kind of an identity <laughs> issue at the time with just not belonging anywhere. You know, we were just outcasts. And we were all on the verge of being homeless. The music is the music of the wild and the young. All right, there you go, man. That is the uh, second title that we're working on right now, the L.A. Metal Scene Explodes, the uh, trailer for that. And it's too bad we we, uh, we uh, put that trailer together, and then after that, we obviously, we interviewed, you know, Stephen Piercy and Chris Holmes and a, a few other people that, uh, a lot of people that aren't featured in the trailer. Maybe it's another it opportunity to do another trailer. Well, we when might we just do close. a theatrical trailer. Yeah, yeah. We might have to do that, because this this was the extended trailer, as, as we call it. Uh, uh, you know, when I say the edited trailer, that's the 96 second one for the theatrical this i believe ran about three minutes but speaking of uh, uh minutes we're going to be running into a break right now and uh when we come back no we got to betty's garage on the last segment we still have a whole other segment we'll talk about oh, snoo oh. we'll talk about the inside metal series and we'll talk about carl alvarez the sex god of the new millennium coming up next on t radio <laughs> v inside metal Hey, what's up? I am Scott. And I am Ken. We are not the Chemical Brothers, but we are. <laughs> we are the Crystal Method. And you are watching T Radio V. This is Quick Fix Radio. Quick Fix Radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it out, y'all. We back in the building. What's yes, going on? Sir, what it do? We got some super guests, super special guests up in the place, in man. In the building, we got all five live in the building. Bone Thugs in the building. All everybody. Five yeah, we live here, in the we house up in here. Tonight, y'all. What's really going on? Hey, man, I had, I had to come see what this TV radio one, y'all, what this all about. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> we got Game on the line. Game, what's going down, baby? What up? What, what up, up, baby? What's going on? Oh man, we got EPO Who is this on the phone with us? Yo, what up, man? It's Akon. Oh, hey, what up? Akon. 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 Who is this on the line? It's be real. We got oh. be real. Oh, be real. Yeah. Yeah. What is we got on the line? This is this Ty Dollar Sign right here. What up, Ty? Ty Dollar Sign in the building. Hey, thanks to all the fans for stopping by. The Quick Fix with Crazy Ball, right here on T Radio V. Ocean and grew legs and they started walking. 
walking and the apes climb down from the tree. What it do is your man Money B from Digital Underground asking everybody to check out the Going Way Back show. Your home for classic hip hop, raw and uncut. Join me and me, DJ Always, as well as Ty Teasy bringing you the old school new news every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on T Radio V. That's right, Radio MTV. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. This is Saxon I like Denim and Leather I like on 78. <laughs> it does sound like some kind of digital synth. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> Biff on 78. Gotta love that, man. Oh, uh, speaking of Biff and Saxon, dude, you, we're all going. I know you're going. Saxon and Armored Saint in March. May 30th. May 30th at the uh, House, of House of Blues. You should get your oh, ticket. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. Oh, man. I can't Saxon and Armored Saxon? Saint. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I, You know what's just crazy? Because both Saxon and Armored Saint alone pretty much sold out the house of blues mm -hmm. uh, when i saw saxon last there i mean the place was packed and when we saw armor saint did you know during the metal blade uh, uh anniversary party and, and uh you know so it's it's going to be a madhouse it's going to be yeah. it's yeah. going to be i mean to oh, quote I an go. armored yeah. saint song yeah, 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 yeah. it's going to be great so get your tickets now it will sell out people um well, you know we're, we're talking about the second title the uh inside metal la metal scene explodes and of course that was where we grew up on uh the troubadour Oh, yeah. uh, country club i mean we used to drive up from orange county all the time an hour drive was nothing we'd go up there every week every thursday night heavy metal night uh at the country club you would have malice black and blue armored saints Steeler, wasp oh, you know and, and just every every week it was it was amazing yeah. and uh talk about some of those early shows that you uh remember car and you were coming down from uh oh, the ie yeah, and the empire yeah. Uh, yeah, Bernardino there were some great shows. I mean, it, not only the shows, but I think that the, the crowd themselves, it was right before the Us Festival, right before Mental Health came out, right. Quiet Riot. So the, the scene was just like vibrating, like this is this is going to mm -hmm. be happening. Yeah, so yeah. And you felt you it. Feel it totally. You totally yeah. felt it. Yeah. And seeing, I remember seeing Wasp for the first time at the Troubadour and seeing Chris yeah, Holmes wow. afterwards. He's like... Is that when they were there? throwing meat at the audience? Yeah, throwing meat in, yeah, and blood in the audience. And, uh, and they cleared the... Ch I think that's when they started clearing the chairs out at the Troubadour. Because it was, that was actually like the Armored first Saint. Armored, okay. When Armored Saint came and people were throwing chairs around because the Armored Saint... I think Armored Saint might have opened for Wasp that, that day. Wow. But um, I, eventually they, they had to do it. I yeah. mean, the funny thing about Wasp is people, they were throwing meat and you had nowhere to run. You're at a dinner table eating your dinner and, right. you know, some... So more meat enters your plate, you know. So uh, it was raw meat. It was yeah, definitely you a fertile time. Could never get time. away with that now. Yeah. Throwing oh hell no. Meat. I mean, with the, the whole Throwing lit flame. Meat. I mean, dude, it looked like the whole place was going to burn down when yeah, they lit yeah. up the was sign and oh, yeah, eight hundred people. You could totally get away with stuff like that back then. It was insane. Flash dude. pots and flames. Well, Blackie and was very good friends with Doug Weston. You know, I mean, they were tight, so he could probably do a lot more than what other people can do. There, yeah, they but put on a they put on an arena show and and stuffed into a small you know 800 seat club you know? remember seeing rat the first time and even seeing stephen percy in this club the troubadour that doesn't hold more than 400 people and he's playing like he's at the forum mm. and they were signed they, they had no record deal but they knew they were pro you know you could tell that rat was seasoned yeah. and ready for being signed i think so. everyone knew i mean everyone knew uh you know, uh, Van Halen got signed out of L.A. Everyone wanted that neck, and they saw that the vibe was starting to happen. And as soon as, like, uh, not even uh, Metal Health, but even the, uh, the Motley record, once that, you know, got picked up by Elektra mm -hmm. and, the you know, the, the uh, Too Fast for Love, and it did, you know, very well independently, you know, once Elektra picked that up. I think that was before. Uh, that it was, was 82, before, yeah. 82, and then, of course, when Metal Health hit number one and boom, that was. But they were signing bands, didn't they? Sign Black and Blue and and uh, they signed sign them in June of '83. So okay. they were like the next one after, I guess, after Metal Health came out. Right. Really. Yeah. But we're gonna go. The through Sound Barrier was even before that. We That's talked right. about that. Sound Barrier were Sound one of the original and one of the very first all black hard rock metal bands. Uh, you know, 
that got signed and uh, you know play in LA they were a great band who covered extensively and both uh, the uh, pioneers and yeah. our sequel yes, uh, LA metal scene explodes a lot of people in it though we got uh, Ron Keel from Steeler talking about the old days uh, uh, Jay Reynolds from Malice, of course. Yeah. Jack Russell reappears and sure. talking about the Dante Dave Fox. Maticetti. We got the guys in Racer X, or uh, uh, we got uh, a couple of the guys in Racer X. We got Lizzie Borden. We got a couple of guys from Leather Wolf, Armored Saint, uh, Armored Saint, of course. Joey and John, and uh, uh, you know Warrior. Joe appears I- in this. Uh, so, actually uh, makes an appearance. He actually makes All an appearance. Right, we got Joe. him to talk, man. We yeah, got we Joe up, Floyd to we talk. We went up to the Gibson showroom, and yeah. we d- really did it uh, nice. We did it right. Nice. Yeah, yes. so it was really. He's spoiled. He had to do it. You know, he says if he's going to do it, it's got to be first class. No, you well, know, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, so it's going to yeah. be good. I'm looking forward to it. We got probably twice as many interviews for the second one, so I'm delving in. We're, we got a lot of work ahead of us, but yeah, it's going to be sure. fun. Let's talk about your band, Snoo, man. Show that CD. Well, you know. Well, you wait a minute. Are, go ahead. Now, I noticed that. See, I thought you want trailer, to talk about your Oh, I do. I do. We're, <laughs> we're going to. In fact, I'm leading into this. Yeah, I noticed in that trailer, which I didn't edit, by the way. So right. That was uh, Mr. You know, I, I saw that for the first yes, time. Was, yeah. uh, anyway, I saw oh, Lady Spickle. First, yes. You've Lady seen Spickle. that trailer before. Have I? You should have, I would think. I don't know. If yeah, I didn't Lenny do it, I don't Spickle. pay attention. Oh, no, I'm I just kidding. Anyway, I saw Lenny Spickle in there. That's right. Lenny Spickle's in our band. That's right. Yeah. started with E. How did How did you get to know Lenny? Uh, when I was managing Eden at the time. Oh, you managed them? Yeah, I was managing them after really? the split with Why didn't I know August this? Red Moon. And Mike Stone oh. came over. And L- Lenny actually was in before. He auditioned. You know, Mike Henry had left yeah. uh, Eden and formed his own band, Armed Forces, a fantastic band. And uh, uh, we were auditioning, and Lenny just came to us. And we're like, this guy's, oh, yeah. this guy's not bad. <laughs> yeah. He's not bad. He's a pain in the ass. But Leonard he's, Spickle. He, he's yes. yes. Yeah, so, Lenny. so Len's in, in our band now. Yeah. Actually, he started as our bass player, we, 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 player, which you brought him to That's us. That's right. Said, Dude, we, we need a bass player. You know anybody? He's, well, yeah, I know this guy, Lenny. <laughs> and he was and mainly he, a rhythm guitar player, he's a guitar but he played player. bass. Yeah. He played yeah. bass with Animal. So he, uh, you yeah. know, Randy Piper's been there's another guy we interviewed, Randy Piper, who we forgot to mention. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So so we played bass with us for a year and then he said, I don't want to play bass anymore. <laughs> so it's like, well, uh, just, I'll play well, guitar. Let's throw, uh, throw a picture up of Snoo. Uh, we got uh, a couple pictures there, I think. Niels Lozauer took these, huh? Yeah. No, oh, no, this, this is us it. right now. Neil okay. didn't take this oh, one. But good. there's Len over there on the left. Yeah, in the beanie. And, yeah. All the idiots this wear is, beanies, man. I tell <laughs> you. Yeah. So, so Len refused to play bass, so we had to get another bass player. So over on the right, that's our new bass player, which is uh, Kelly McGee, who was in Warrior. Oh. Joe Floyd, there you go. A little yeah. history lesson from Curtis Don. I know. We're, we're bringing all these guys yeah, into yeah. our band. Now that's a Neil's. Now Lozauer that's Neil's Lowe's Hour, and that's Willie Bass. Willie really Bass, who was on our ver- second episode of Inside Metal here, with along with Bernie Kay from Sound Barrier. Yeah. We talked about black metal, and we're not talking about the death metal. No, no. We're talking Entirely about. a different form. Yes. But yeah, and there's, there's another cool one shot. from the album, What's It To You, that we recorded with Willie Bass on, on, on bass. Yes. And uh, so that was that was our last album. We're working on the uh, the follow up right now. And how's that coming along? It's coming along great, man. Very. I mean, cool. we got Lenny on rhythm guitar. We got him off bass. We made him happy. Yeah. We got Kelly McGee on bass, well, and it's, it's really coming along great. And uh, we should have got a clip from your video from the uh, the pull your stinger video. Pull you my stinger. Pull yes. my stinger. Yes. You got a new video for this new album coming out? Uh, we out. will, we will, oh. yes. I'm not going to give anything away just yet, but uh, very cool. You know, you and working at it in the studio, right? In the studio, yes. There and you, you were go. on our show. I live was from That's the right. studio. That's right. Don't fuck with we, me, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. We had Bob on as a guest. Well, I hope you guys are ready for Betty's Garage coming up next. Betty's Garage. And Betty's Garage. That is our contest. And uh, Carl Alvarez. Who's, who is Betty? Bet it, it comes from Betty was John Bush's mother who recently passed away, and we call oh. it Betty's Garage because we had the best time in Betty's Garage when I used to uh, oh, nice. hang out with Armored Saint in the early '80s. Yeah. Um, we were all about 19 when they signed with Chrysalis, and they uh, uh, John was living at home in um, El Serino, and we used to party in his garage, and his mom would bring us sandwiches and we'd hang out we'd just crank up metal oh, drink cool. beers and you know we were all like 18 19 you know at the time uh, and we might have even been younger this might have even been before they were signed but uh so in tribute to uh, his mother because john was our first guest here on uh, 
the Inside yeah. Metal Show. And he's, he's so is that uh, when you started calling him John Book? John Book. <laughs> he is the uh, the leader. Uh, he is uh, of the uh, Betty's Garage. So, uh, you know, we're going to see if Carl could kick his ass on this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving Ooh, it up to Carl. The pressure's I know, on. I know really Carl is. Is, is the master metalhead. But wow. uh, before we lead into a break, um, uh, uh, we got the third episode, of course, The Rise of L.A. Thrash Metal, which, uh, you know, I felt we needed to do because the L.A. Thrash Metal scene had been kind of pushed aside mm -hmm. to the glam scene. And, of course, San Francisco kind of took the reign it's of thrash really metal. It's really unwritten, if yes. you think about it. Even though the history is there. It's not talked about because I think thrash became a global phenomenon later, mm. but it was underground for so long. But it had such a great reputation because of its integrity, how it reached the people. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it was only appropriate to do. A lot of it came out of the new wave of British heavy metal. So in the uh, Rise of L.A. Thrash Metal, we interview Brian Tatler from Diamond Head, John Gallagher from Raven, one of the first kind of speed metal bands. And of course, Raven, yeah. uh, we just interviewed Wolf Hoffman and Peter Baltus from Accept, who are credited with Fast as a Shark being one of the uh, m most influential songs, you know, along with Motorhead, of course, that uh, inspired thrash metal music because everyone just wanted to get faster and heavier mm -hmm. and all that. And when that Fast as a Shark came out, I know, you know, Metallica, Anthrax, Exodus, all those bands, it like they said, we, we got to step it up, you know. So that's what it was all about, is stepping it up and, you know, being the fastest, heaviest band, mm -hmm. you know, a slayer like to. Uh, to uh, boast about in their oh, ads have, uh, in the headbanger fanzine, a classic yeah, fanzine. We have Caton uh, who also pushed the envelope too. He was always trying to be faster than Slayer and that whole thing. So sure, so much of that out there. Yeah, and Dark Angel, of course. You know, Gene Hoagland, Eric Meyer. You know, they uh, were hot on the heels of Slayer. So good. You know, oh, so Juan that's Garcia, why you kept Agent speeding Steel. up those songs, right? That, so yeah, yeah. Be <laughs> so I could be faster them. than all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so I could be the true speed yeah. metal king, huh? Let's see, let's see. Uh, beat that so uh we got a couple minutes left before we go into our next break um with that uh, time spent to uh, carl talk about the la metal scene dude from the carl alvarez perspective people want to know people th this guy runs a facebook page by the way the la inside la metal documentary is that how, what it is on facebook I think it's and the twitter metal movie LA. documentary yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. On You'll Facebook and Twitter. He's the man that posts all those great pictures that everyone keeps talking about. So many documentaries, I think, that we've influenced since we've started. So many people are coming out. Dave Medichetti uh, has a Y&T documentary. There's a Grover great. Jackson I heard about story that. one yeah, that's coming out, really? too. The guitar manufacturer who kind of revolutionized the whole. And all Grover of us. featured. Yeah, it's, we we're, started we're the it influential <laughs> but, uh, it, I think in this day and age, the way the digital delivery systems are happening and obviously iTunes changed the whole game with downloading mm -hmm. but video on demand seems to be the appropriate vehicle there's so many outlets Netflix so ne everything so yeah. we yeah. can we there's a great opportunity for these documentaries to be seen many times over opportunity yeah. to hear I think about it's a good it thing. it's because people get it right in their home it. people they don't it. have to go out and shop for it that's all i watch is it. documentaries not yeah. just on music but i mean documentaries are the most e uh, you know, educational thing. I mean, all you get on regular TV is these fucking reality shows oh, and shit. Yeah. You want something real. You want to educate yourself. You go on Netflix and whatever and, and watch these documentaries. Yeah. And I think the well, rock yeah, dogs. Well, are I mean, this is real. Yeah, Alan, reality. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. those those reality yeah, shows yeah. aren't real. They're all true. I get this from time to time too on the Facebook page. That people want. It. Where can I see this? Where can I see this? You will be able to see it. So, yeah. it will be seen. Whether it will it be, be seen. Yeah. Whether it be Amazon, Netflix, whatever platform that's going to be out there, it will. So Absolutely. Leading into our last break with a little snoo, and it's Ooh. at regular speed. Ooh. Go yeah. figure that. Oh, come on. You didn't speed it up? No, not this one. We made sure on this. Inside Metal, T-Radio B, coming back with Betty's Garage. Somebody pull it for me. I got fall down on the floor. Hi, I'm Sheriff John Bennell. You're watching T Radio. Radio and TV? What? <laughs> perfect. Uh, that was perfect. Yeah, no, Why are you asking me to do problem. this after 12 drinks? <laughs> <laughs>
Hey geeks, wake up! We got big news. I'm not gonna mumble this time. Geekscape, the long-running movie video game. Let me do one more. Hey geeks, we got big news! Geekscape, your favorite show about movies, video games, comics, and TV, is coming to T Radio V Monday, October 6th, and it'll be on every Monday from then on, 7 p.m. until the apocalypse happens. We're all eaten by zombies. Hi, I'm Holly, and this is Michael. We're on Love Life on T-Radio V every day. No! no! <laughs> every Tuesday. Tuesdays. Every day I try to get her to have a love life. <laughs> but every Tuesday, where you can watch us and hear us, only one place. Only hear him, though. 5 p.m. Pacific time, T-Radio V. We're going to talk about love, relationships, sex. intimacy. There'll be some sex, but not... Between us. No, I don't have sex with him. Not often. You're single, we're gonna share with you what to do if you just want booty calls or be in a relationship. Oh, well, you know you like booty calls. I do. What's it like to be in a relationship? We always say you have to be a strong me before you can be a great we. One place, right here, Tuesdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, only on T Radio V, right? Yep. Cool. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Enough snow. We like to do the in outro and intro of Snoo. There you are, Curtis. Don Vito, the vocalist What's it to ya? of Snoo, the uh, <laughs> the bastard child of Brian Johnson and Dan McCafferty, right? <laughs> uh, you know, just say yes. I'll take it. It's that. a compliment. I, I, I'll accept it. <laughs> of course, and uh, Carl Alvarez here right now. He's not a singer, but he could. Uh, in the shower, perhaps. There you go. <laughs> I was going to say play a mean skin flute, but that wouldn't be a very Ooh. nice thing to say about my, my uh, co-producer here, Carl I'll Alvarez. give you a pass on that. <laughs> no, no demonstrations, please. Yeah. There you go. So Carl Alvarez, Curtis Don Vito, both uh, involved in the Inside Metal movie, along with myself, sure. my co-producers here. That's and for sure. Uh, I can't even we tell had you a how blast many hours I spent with this. Blast. And we were just watching Michael DeBar, on, uh, uh, who does a show on T-Radio V. was on the... Uh, little uh, uh ad there for uh, his show uh uh or for for the halloween show they did he's he's featured extensively in this uh, first episode oh, he yeah. was great we just ran into him last week at the uh, jonas auckland's uh, grammy party at, at the, the uh, chateau marymont yes and, and uh, he was very uh very cordial very oh, nice he was a great guy yeah, yeah he yeah. was hanging yeah, out i didn't there. get an invite to that i know Jeez. don't uh, that's why robert's better <laughs> <laughs> hey oh. it wasn't up to me <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, yeah he's uh, uh, he's uh, featured extensively. He's he's got a great show on on T Radio V. Uh, we we're just talking about the uh, great interviews he's done uh, on that. But uh, if you're listening, Michael, come on our come on my show. I'll I'll have to give him a call. Get him on here. It's yeah. always fun to, to yeah. hang out with uh, Michael. Oh DeBar. yeah, a lot of great things to say. In oh yeah, movie. he he was one of the stars on that. People loved him no, and yeah. Lars. He's and very and, eloquent. And, yeah, very eloquent and. Uh, some great stuff, and of course, uh, lots of innuendo. Yes, absolutely. Well, let's let's not stall any further. Let's. Uh, you you ready to start, Frank? You ready to start Betty's Garage? All right, he's, he's got the songs off. queued up. So we'll do like about thirty second segment. You know the dealio. You know I don't need to explain to you guys. You know the how it dealio. works. Dealio. You know that's yeah a little <laughs> lingo there. Yeah, I got to get that little radio lingo. You know I got to yeah. be compete with the pros, so mm. uh, so to speak. So let's get going, Frank. All right. So we're starting. This yeah, is it. This okay. is it. Come on, right out of the gate. This is Riot. Oh. From that era. Double bass. Gosh. This is one of the Not Anvil? Yeah, there you go. Oh, Anvil. Okay. Song? I don't know the song. March of the Crabs. Uh, March of the, the Crabs, Metal that's Metal right. Album. The, uh, the metal, instrumental. Metal. Yes, I mean, Rob Reiner's drumming. One yep. of the... Uh, that's you know, right. Most influential drummers there. Yeah. For uh, for thrash metal, one of the most influential drummers, Lars Ulrich, uh, you know, Charlie Benante, they were all big fans of Rob Reiner. Slayer. Okay, next song there, Frank. This is all you call. This is a 
I made it. I made a challenge for you, Carl. I don't want you to beat out John Bush. Yet. I mean, no. But uh, who who is your your um, uh, think think Sweden? A Swedish no, group? No, not Sweden. Think the Far East. Oh, uh, oh, Ooh, loudness. No, anthem. No, who started it all in Japan? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Kyoto Yamamoto. Yes, Bow Wow. Oh, that's there you right. go. Mm, Bow Wow for tough. the warning from Stardust. You, know? yeah, you being a big loudness that. fan, I thought you might loudness. have uh, uh, known uh, about that uh, Bow Wow. 20th Century Child, I think we'll that was yeah. it. Song number three. Can we turn it up a little bit? In the headphones? There you go. Crank it. Carl Curtis, think new wave of yeah, British heavy metal. New wave of British heavy metal. A to Z. Uh, what was Adrian Smith's band? Urchin. Urchin. Uh, nope. Mm. But they were uh, one of the leaders. Um, if you talk about five of the leaders of Tigers the Tigers Band There you go. <laughs> oh, this guy's Tigers pretty good. That was Tigers. That was from the first album with yeah, Just Cops, Wildcat. the Wildcat album. Yeah, Ooh. that was Fire Clown. I love wow. that bass yeah, intro. Good. Yeah, good stuff. All right, next song. Speaking of bass intro, oh, cheap trick. Oh, there's a, there's a giveaway. That was good. <laughs> oh, if it was so easy, why didn't you guess it? <laughs> I was just gonna say it, and I heard him say it. No, yeah. I knew well, that. you know, there's there's a, a few that uh, you know. That's a great song, though. Yeah, that is. Yeah. All right, next song. Aesthetic X. Yeah. Very good. I don't know the song. But. Love Dump. Yes, yeah. from the uh, Wisconsin Death, Death Trip. Trip album. Very good, Carl. Yes. Next song. This is a tough one. I definitely know some of the musicians in this band. Yeah, so familiar. The drummer and bassist played with one of the greatest guitar players around. <laughs> one of your favorite guitar players. Both of your favorite guitar players. Jimi Hendrix? No. <laughs> Think Germany. Michael Schenker? Yes. Oh, they were in the Michael Schenker group. Oh, was that Michael Schenker? No, no, it no, was, that wasn't Schenker. No, I'm just saying the drummer and the bassist played with Michael Schenker the, that you just heard. Uh, on Chris, the, on Glenn, what album? Chris Glenn and uh, Ted McKenna. Oh, yeah. okay. What band were they in before? Oh, I, I, I thought you would know uh, this. Very underground. This classic, is classic, amazing. This, this band. is uh, from no. Scotland. Scotland. I, I got it. Wouldn't know. Sensational Alex Harvey. Oh, yeah, Alex Harvey. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That is some old school classic hard rock for you. One of the most underrated bands around, musicianship wise, unsurpassed oh, for yeah. its time. Okay. 70, that was 71, 72. Wow. 71. Uh, Midnight Moses. All right, we ready for the next song? <laughs> my favorite band growing up. Isn't that Yoli Ben Rock? Oh, 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 oh. Sounds like. BTO. What? BTO. Yes. Whoa. Very good. <laughs> Bachman Turner Overdrive. Not fragile. They were a heavy band. Dude, that yeah. is one yeah. heavy out. Yeah. They were. So that, yeah. that song is one of the most classic metal anthems. 1974. Wow. The title track, Not Fragile. Not fragile. Classic. Yeah. C.F. Turner, yeah. dude. God, has been so long. That guy I is remember a that. monster That was actually vocalist. a heavy album. Oh, it was a very heavy album yeah. first time. Are you kidding mm -hmm. me? All right, Frank. Go. Uh, I'm making this tough for you, Carl. And Curtis. You are, man. God. Super popular band, though, now. This is before they became popular, though. Before they became popular. Uh, 
Uh, oh, well, that's Pantera. Yeah, very yeah. good. Wow. Ooh. Metal, uh, that was from the Power Metal, the title okay. track from Power Metal, which was just before the Cowboys from Hell yeah. album. Was that when Phil Phil was first Phil, one in yeah, the band? Yeah, Phil just came in the band okay. with that. See, I could have thrown you something from Projects in the Jungle or Metal uh, Magic. Lord that Tracy. Really. <laughs> oh, that's right. Lord <laughs> Tracy was a singer, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Dude, you got a better memory than I do. I forgot all about that guy. All right. Uh, next song. <laughs> Sabotage? Nope. Same label. Oh, Nine Records. Okay. Um. I was gonna say it's like Max Norman production, but nope. actually oh, uh, Michael Wagner. Skid Row. There you go. Skid Row. Oh. Mud Kicker. Uh-huh. One of their heavier tracks oh. from the Slave to the Grind album. Yeah, good, good thing one. you got him on your team. I know. <laughs> I make it, I make it difficult because I have to. You know, you're you're probably uh, almost up there with Bush. Uh, oh, if we could okay. get these. How many songs we got left here? One more song. One more. I don't know. Okay. If we got to get yeah, Carl. Let's see. You got to bring All it. right. All let's right. see. Let's Last see. song. Oh, that's a good set. Son of a bitch. There you go. <laughs> All right, Carl. Nice. There Thank you go. You. So what was that? About six or six out of the ten? Six I or guess, seven? something like that. We'll have to count. I wasn't keeping track, but you did pretty damn good. We, we got, what, about a minute left before, um, or roughly about a minute roughly. or so before we get into our, well, we, we this is our final segment. So Is uh, it? Why don't no, you give out? already? Yeah, we're Impossible. already almost done, man. So uh, give out some, uh, some ways people could get in touch with Snoo. And you got some shows coming up, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, you can, you can find us. Just go to snoo, you can snoo, find snoo, snoo, you. com. Snoo you. com. There you and, go. And uh, you hook us, yeah, I'll hook you up with anything you want. There you All go. you, you, you do is say that. is you watch this show, there you and go. I'll send you whatever the hell you want. I don't, you, care. Yes, you see, he'll I don't s- care what it is. He'll send you your soil, his soil <laughs> panties, right? <laughs> All right. I'll send you anybody's, uh, <laughs> anybody I can get a hold of. Anyway, All right, yeah, give, just, give, just give the uh, before I, I, I hear the music come the on. Inside so. metal, you can go to Metal Rock Films. Put it in the camera so people metal can see. Metal Rock Films. Carl. No, whoa, whoa. The camera. See the little camera there? Oh yeah, this one. There so any Metal Rock Films, you can go to. You can also go to the Facebook page uh, Inside LA Metal. Make sure they see it. You can go to the Twitter page as the, as we get closer to the release date. Look for announcements <laughs> and so forth. And uh, yeah, just. Uh, all right, we've got to keep there. it short, Carl. All right. So <laughs> check it out there. This is our All right, check us out on Facebook and on Twitter, Inside Metal. Thank you again, Carl Alvarez, Curtis Don Vito. Thanks for having us, Bob. Yeah. No, Anytime. Awesome, check out the movie. Support us. We're starving. Yes. Damn it. All right. Thanks, guys. You are watching T-Radio V, Radio MTV.